Embroidery is one of the first ways that people um, learned how to decorate their clothing. This was a pillow I made when I was probably in fifth or sixth grade and I still have it. Um, and then I have this little basket that I keep my little box of embroidery and literally this embroidery box is from when I was about 10 years old. I keep all my needles and thread in here. So with your embroidery needle we made a little blue piece of felt. So make sure that you keep this is your embroidery needle in that felt piece so that you don't lose it. You're going to be making an embroidery sampler before we start the embroidery project. The first thing you'll do is um, cut a 9 by 9 inch square. Because our embroidery hoop is 6 inches, the 7 by 7 inch square will be too small. So measure off a 9 by 9 inch square and then finish the edges of it with a zigzag finish so it does not unravel. Fold your square in half and finger press across here so that you have a center line. I don't have one of the one inch rulers like we have at school here at home, so I just have this wide one that I'm going to be using. You'll be using the one inch rulers that we have. So I'm going to make a center line here. And then you're going to be making four lines above and four lines below, all a half an inch apart. I'll have a sample for you in class and you'll number the lines one, two, three. When you get down to four you need a top and a bottom line so you'll put four there. Same thing with five, you'll need a top and a bottom line. Six, you just need one line and then you'll draw a little heart with two daisies on either side of it. Um, you can refer to the little sample sheet I have for you what the daisy will look like. Your embroidery hoop comes in two parts so when you get it, get a sharpie and put your name on both parts of the hoop. This hoop has a little lip on the top, the inner loop, so that will always be up, so you'll place that on the table. Place your fabric on top of the inner loop. Place your adjustable loop on top and slide it down. Tighten, but don't tighten it all the way, tighten it a little bit, then pull the edges of your fabric evenly around the circle tighten it a little bit more and then adjust again. So adjust and tighten, adjust and tighten, adjust and tighten. You alternate like that. And you'll see as you're working that every once in a while you may need to adjust it once more. For the first row that you're doing of French knots you'll want to move the fabric down a little bit so that this isn't too close to the top so that you have a little room to work. And then as you do each row of stitches you'll move it up and down um, when you need to. We're working with a six ply um, embroidery thread so don't split it. We're going to keep all six strands together. You want about 13 or 14 inches. I measure from my finger and my thumb up to my bicep. That's a little bit longer than that. To thread the needle, fold, since you have all these different strands here, a technique is to fold it in half, make a loop, and then I press it flat between my finger and my thumb. Take the eye of my embroidery needle right to where it is and then simply push that loop through. We are not doubling the thread like we did with regular single thread. So you leave a short tail and a long tail. Lay the tail over your finger, make an X, roll it off, make your middle finger come and grab it. If you practice that enough, you can get it on the very end. I'm not that great at it. I need to practice more. If you have a long tail left over, you clip that off and just leave a little knot on the end. The first um, stitch on your sampler will be the French knot. It's used to create um, when you need like a dot-like effect. So it could be like an, an eye. You would make a little dot like that. If you wanted to make the center of a flower, you would use a French knot. Um, or if you just want to add sort of more texture and decoration, these are all little French knots that I made up and down the branch here. I had a student one year um, do a poodle, a poodle design, and she did I don't know how many French knots to create a poodle effect on a dog. You'll have your handout sheet that will have these needle diagrams. Sometimes they're kind of hard to read and understand, but um, maybe some of you will benefit from it. 
it tells you in embroidery you always bring everything up from the bottom so you start underneath and I always keep my hand here to feel what's going on underneath the hoop as well as what's happening on the top so to do the French knot you bring it up through the bottom you almost need three hands to do a French knot you have to set the hoop down after you bring the needle up um, this is the trick right here this hand is going to hold on to what I call the tail of the thread so you bring it up and then the other thing you have to remember is to wrap the thread away from you away from you okay so you hold the needle point facing up wrap away one two I'll do the first one with two wraps now this is the part where you need three hands. Then you bring the needle back right next to where you came up. Do not let go of the tail. Hold onto that tail. And then you pull, 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 slide. And there's your French knot. Now if you want a little bit bigger one, again I'm coming up through the bottom. So I'm always checking to see what's happening on the other side. I come up through the bottom lay the hoop down on the table, hold on to the tail, needle up, one, two, away from me, one, two, three, away, that'll make a little bit bigger dot, go into where, next to where you just came out of, hold on to the tail to the very end, and that makes a kind of fluffier dot, oops, that one's, I don't know how good that is, so let me try another one here, come up, Lay the hoop down, hold the tail, one, two, buckle my shoe back in, hang on to the tail, and you'll continue across that row. Don't ever let your thread get too, like less than three or four inches because you won't have enough to make a dot, uh, a knot on the back of your what you're working on. So I just came up, I'm making my last one here. I probably should have stopped one before, but so away from me. One, two, back in close to where I came out. Now I'm on the back side and I'm going to end it. You're going to make 16 French knots across here because when you're 16 you're allowed to drive. So 16 French knots will let you move on to your next embroidery stitch. It looks different on the back. It looks like this. And our knot that we've been doing all year is you just take a little bite of the fabric. Come, oops, I lost my loop. Okay, so let me show you what happens if you don't have enough thread to make a knot. Since we have six strands of thread here, I can split these in half. Three and three. And I can do what's called a square knot. I go right over left left over right. That's a square knot and I can clip that. I would prefer to do the the knot that we've been doing where you go through the loop at the end but I ran out of thread so now you got to see how to do a different kind of knot. The next stitch is called the straight stitch. This is the simplest of all embroidery stitches. It can be used for small details, for outlines, or for filling in small areas. Um, I like to use it to outline things. The split stitch is the best one. That's the solid stitch here. But when I'm done doing the solid stitch, I like to do this straight stitch to outline things. It makes everything look um, more detailed. It can also be used for filling areas in. So I think that's a hedgehog or a porcupine. Porcupine, probably. So I use it here, and then on my squirrel, I wanted to give the squirrel some little fur, so I use the straight stitch on that also. You can choose whatever colors you like for your sampler. I'm going to be doing mine in like the rainbow or the color wheel. So I'm going yellow, then orange, and then I'll do red, and purple, and then blue and green, so I'm going to do a rainbow on this sample. This is the straight stitch, so remember you always start everything from underneath the hoop. So I have my thread here with the knot on the end. If you're right-handed, you always work left to right. So I'm going to come up on my line, and then I'm going to go down. 
and I'm feeling with my finger on the back here that I'm not getting any knots or funny loops. The straight stitch looks best if you make it equal. So however much you come up, you go down. So I think that looks like it's about a quarter inch. So you go up and down like this. You can also work the straight stitch this way if you feel comfortable with it. Instead of making two pulls like that, you can go down and up. So you can work this whole stitch. Oops, I got a knot. You can work this from the top side of the hoop. So down and up. But it looks best if you try to make the space in between equal to each other. If I have extra thread and I've cut my thread too long, I just do a little loop around my finger like that and kind of just keep them like that. And you can keep them in your plastic bag that way too. Stitch number three is called the split stitch. This is the main stitch that you will be using. It creates a solid line so that you can outline the um, image that you're working on. It's a solid line. It covers everything up. It's easy to use. It's here. So here I used it again to outline. That's where I begin the outline of the squirrel and then you can use your different stitches to make it um, more interesting. So you always start underneath your hoop. You stop, start from the bottom up. So I'm going to come up and make a stitch. The stitch should be 1 8 to 3 8 of an inch. I'd say about a quarter inch is a good guide. So you can see it's about the same size as the um, straight stitch. What makes it a split stitch is when you come up from underneath, you split the stitch. So you go in the middle of what you just stitched, and then you go forward about a quarter of an inch. Go down. Again, I'm always keeping my finger here on the back to feel that no threads are getting tangled. And I keep my finger where the stitch is so I can see where to come up. Because you might come up and you're like, oh, that's the wrong spot. Nope, that's the wrong spot. And then you kind of poke around till you get right in the middle. You come up and you go forward. So you're like a little inchworm. Come up and you inch ahead. Go down, poke around till you find the middle, come up, and you inch ahead. Inchworm, inchworm, measuring the marigolds. Seems to me you'd stop and see how beautiful they are. So that's the split stitch. It makes a solid line. That should be the main stitch that you'll be using.